Morning Aero Cameras and welcome to Aero J's reviewing Cabin of Delight and today we are doing Air Wheel Accessories Part 3. Okay this is going to encompass several things, first of all air wheeling in the rain, we're going to talk about the accessories you need to go successfully air wheeling about in this sort of weather, I don't know if you can see there but it's coming down on and off. Anyway, uh, then we're going to also talk about um, some other general accessories we might need and uh, things that are good ideas to just carry around with you all the time you're out gliding about. Uh, so let's start at the beginning. Air wheeling in the rain. Now, in theory, and according to the manual, it's probably not a good idea to air wheel about in heavy rain, but I've done it, I know it can be done, and there's a couple of things you can do that'll mean that your machine isn't going to fail when you try and do it as well. So the first thing is to get yourself one of these. Now I've mentioned this before on an accessories thing I'm sure. Um, or maybe it was one I didn't publish. But anyway, uh, this is the waterproof covering that came with that rucksack there. Uh, but basically because in that rucksack everything that you put in the inside compartment is pretty much waterproof anyway. Um, then this leaves you free to fit this over the top of that to stop any rain going in your vital electronics here at the top. Excuse all this, this is all just test rubbish, just to give me ideas about what's going on and things, so sorry it all looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but uh, anyway, so the plan with this is that it goes nicely over the top there like this. Now the perfect thing about that is that when you turn your machine on, you can still see all the lights nice and clearly through the top, and yet this whole top section is beautifully waterproof there. So the only place we have to worry about water getting in is the stuff that's dragged up by the wheels up into the battery compartment, which to be fair doesn't start till here, so you're good to go through you know, water that's really pretty deep. I reckon probably up to about there should be alright in short bursts. Now the other thing you're going to need, um, if you're air wheeling about in the wet, oh it's all kicking in a bit now, is one of these, which is a quick fire umbrella. So in two simple moves, one and two. There we go. You can inflate that at a minute's notice or a second's notice even. You see it's starting to rain, you reach into your backpack without even stopping. You can just be air wheeling along the road, deploy this and suddenly you have to be ready for what happens but the rain isn't falling on you or your air wheel anymore which is a good start. But there are things to note about this. Let's fold it back up like this while I tell you about what happens when you open one of those on a very windy day. Because I can tell you, if you're standing on one of those, and you open one of those, and the wind catches it, well, suddenly you and that can be parted quite easily, and you can find that your directions, which were previously nicely under your control, suddenly very much aren't anymore. So, um, with practice, you realise that actually you can use the umbrella to your advantage. And by holding it behind you, you can use it either as a brake for when you need to sort of slow down, generally or um, you know for example if you're going downhill and trying to recharge that could make your job slightly easier or you can even use it as a sail and use it to get you uphill by pointing it in the right direction and actually using the wind to give you a helping hand up any steep gradients which is going to save you batteries uh, because of course the slower you go up hills the less you're expending energy as you do so. So anyway that seems to be uh, most of the weather proofing kit except or most of the rain kit I should say except for this. Um, this is representing something I haven't got yet which is that Scotch Guard waterproof spray because we're going to need something to put on our camera to record in the wet. Now I've got a GoPro 2 here on a little stand which we'll talk about later. That's a general stand you should always keep in your bag so that you can just quickly whack a GoPro on it and uh, park that anywhere for some ultra still you know like no no movement, no vibrations, no shaking type footage um, and that's how you get nice scenic footage by just remembering to take that little black plate which comes as part of the GoPro box with you. Well I've discussed that now, have a nice so maybe we won't come back to it later. What was I talking about? There we go, I was talking about making that weatherproof and the way to make that weatherproof when it's mounted so low to the ground over here on this little Actually, I'll just turn my air wheel off because that's just pointlessly using battery. And unscrew that. And we'll just clip that in there like this. 
And uh, as you can see, this is quite close to the ground. There's going to be lots of splashback from puddles, isn't there? And there's going to be lots of flicking up from the wheels here as they go over wet bits. Um, so, we obviously we're protected by the waterproof case there, but that's not going to stop our video being ruined by all the water that just gets on that screen and then stays there. And of course, if you're moving through very fast rain, you can expect that to be washed off by subsequent rain. But if it's just drizzle or just sort of really moody, miserable weather like this, you know, where it's on and off and just falling in variable quantities, most of the time you're going to have droplets on your uh, lens and that's going to be useless. So, this can here is representing the waterproofing, water dispersing uh, spray that I'm going to be spraying on the outside of that when I get some, and that is going to hopefully make all the water that lands on that lens get out of it and just move out of the way, so hopefully we retain a clear picture all the way through. Uh, obviously some rain on the lens isn't too bad because you want to give a decent impression of what the weather was like, <laughs> but uh, you also want to be able to see the wider picture and what was going on. and. Uh, we want the GoPro staying as in as sharp a focus as possible. Right, so let's move on to the next thing in our kit. Now we're moving slightly out of the things you need in the rain department now to things you might just generally need. We've discussed lighting before and riding at night. Uh, we've seen my night wand, which is in another room at the moment, but uh, let's also talk about some more practical and conventional things you can do to light up your life while you're riding along in the dark. So uh, this is a 25 LED basic handheld torch here that you can get from Tesco or anywhere like that for about fiver, maybe seven quid. Very ruggedly built, very solid, and does produce what I would say is just on the edge of being a workable light that will show you the ground coming up in front of you on your air wheel, even if it's really quite dark, um, you know, and if you're going quite slowly, it's more than possible to find your way home with one of those, which is why it remains in my rucksack in the back here as my backup torch but it is firmly a backup because why would you ever use one of those if you've got one of these? This is a Phoenix PD35, a 960 lumen sun in a stick is how I can best describe it. This is just an awesome, awesome bit of kit. A brief demo which of course the camera will just have no, no hope of picking up. There's our lowest setting straight into the lens. But we can override that with this mad strobing, look at this. And then we can go back to the low light and increase that, like that, until we're right up to really ridiculous levels of light. A nice little push button at the top, and we're varying brightness level with this little grey button here. Now this is an incredibly well constructed bit of kit, just so solid, exactly the right weight, so it's really light, but also feels, you know, like it's really rugged and really well built. You know that if you drop that down a cliff, you're going to be able to get to the bottom of that cliff and find it again and it's still going to work, if not, still be on. Um, so there we go, that is now my primary trusted light, it's going to cost you about 65 or 70 quid for one of those. Uh, but uh, in that strobing thing actually is really, really helpful when you're going along in the dark because it slows down or it makes it, it seem that the ground approaching you is going much slower, maybe about half the speed. And so you can see so much more easily all the ruts and bumps and things you should avoid coming up in front of you. So I would recommend this just a thousand percent. If you're ever going to ride an air wheel like that, in the wet or not, and in the dark, you really should get yourself a decent, decent handheld torch like that. Comes with a nice little clip so you can clip it to your gloves or your sleeve or your belt or anything and that is just brilliant. So well worth the cash, Phoenix PD35 2014 edition, well done you. This um, I was trying to mount on a glove because it's the most annoying thing about being on an air wheel sometimes is that you can't see behind you easily without stopping and turning around or sort of turning around while you're going along which just can't help but alter your direction. So I thought okay I'll order um, some of those and I have not yet found a way to make those usable in any way at all. I've tried attaching them to helmets, to gloves, to the sleeves of things, to the air wheel itself but no it's just I can't even, I can't make that work at the moment. It's just not big enough an area and it's just hard to get it positioned so that you know so that you can usefully see what's behind you. So there we go, tenner for a couple of those, probably a tenner down the drain unless I find some dramatic and inventive way to use them later. It's not out of the question, but basically don't buy those, not really, waste of time. 
Okay, also in the waste of time pile, these silly little lights here. I think I got two of these for three quid from China. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. No. Go away. Right, now moving on. The next thing in our little review is the extensive array of sunglasses. Um, even if you're out in the rain, your eyes still need to not have rain in them. Uh, so sunglasses are applicable here as well. So even in weather like this, yep, still going on, still not out in it. Um, this is what you need. A useful array of sunglasses perfectly matched to the conditions you'll be experiencing. Now, this may look to you like just a selection of cheap sunglasses, and indeed that's what it is, but not without reason. Um, we start with my favourite ones at the front. Um, now, these are actually worth more than a quid, and <laughs> probably the only ones that are worth more than a quid. Well, I must have spent, I don't know, maybe 15 quid on these. And these are very, very light, all plastic, nicely reflective, really, really uh, just non obtrusive. Don't get in your way. You can put them in any pocket, you know, they don't break that much. They fall off your head all the time. They're not particularly grippy, useless in the wet, but they do a really, really good job in the sun and maintaining a low profile on your face. So these remain my favourite and most comfortable shades. So that's what you wear when it's uh, lovely sunny weather and you're going to be riding over smooth surfaces uh, with no bumps that are going to throw you off or jolt your sunglasses off your head. But for weather like this and for bumpy rides down, you know, muddy paths and BMX tracks and things and where there are large rocks and roots and trees and all the things that are going to cause you problems, you need a pair of these which are one pound but ultra tough <laughs> indestructible pound shop 99p glasses they, they might not look like the most stylish thing in the world but I don't care about stylish I care about a not having glass lenses so that if I do end up with a, you know a face plant and these end up mashed into my face then at least I'm not mashing glass in there and the plastic will just pop off as they all explode because they're cheaply made and not built to last so here we're using that to an advantage, and of course if they are only a quid each, you might as well have five pairs of them. And so that's what I've done there, I have got five specific pairs of glasses. There are others around the house as well, I reckon I must have ten or twelve in total. But each of them have, you know, a really... Um, I can choose from three or four potential models every time I go out, and I always try to have the right sunglasses around, and indeed a useful backup pair as well. Less tragedy strikes and something happens to the first. So there we go, I think that's the end of our review today. So we've learned how to air wheel in the wet, how to air wheel in the dark, how to wear a lot of sunglasses and not spend more than seven quid, how to always have a stationary platform with you so that you've always got some decent film work, even if your air wheeling footage has been a total disaster, you've still got a nice panorama or fixed still shot um, of whatever you were looking at at the time, so not a wasted trip. Uh, and we've also looked at some things that are a waste of time, like that, and that, and rubbish. Uh, but, very good. Uh, most impressive thing today, I think, is the pop-up umbrella. And I think they're 13 quid from Boots, and yeah, goodbye. Deployable at an instant. And look at that, safety feature as well. While it's wrapped up. Can't push the button. Anyway, so that's it from me, Aero J, and his dressing gown of reviewing delight. Enjoy your air wheeling, enjoy your flying, enjoy my videos, enjoy life or ignore all that and do what you like. See you next time.